Today we're going to be taking a look at Kafka on top of Docker Compose. We're going to be running a Zookeeper instance, Kafka 1, Kafka 2, Kafka 3, and connect them. Then we'll proceed to create a Kafka topic called Orders. We're going to create a producer, which is going to produce a message to the topic Orders. We'll also create a consumer, which will consume the message from the topic Orders. Today we're going to be taking another look at Kafka, but this time on Docker Compose. In a previous video we've taken a look at Kafka for the first time. We've taken a look at how to install Kafka using a Docker file and running it as a container. We created one Zookeeper instance and three Kafka instances and connected them. We also used the provided consumer and producer scripts to consume and produce a message using a Kafka topic. To make it easier to run this entire environment locally, we're going to be using Docker Compose. But firstly, if you're not familiar with Kafka, so what is Kafka? Apache Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform, also a message queue or message broker system. In traditional HTTP networks, a client sends a message to a server. If the server is slow, we get latency. If the server dies, the request fails and has to be retried. The client is coupled with the server. However, in Kafka, the client sends the message to a Kafka broker. The server who may be interested in the message will get the message from the Kafka broker. This decoupling creates a lot of architectural advantages. It adds scalability and high availability because we can scale clients to produce more messages, add more brokers to deal with messages, and scale receivers to process messages. Messages can also be replicated across brokers, further bolstering its resilience. In Kafka, the clients here are called producers. Messages go to brokers, which are Kafka instances. Servers that consume messages are called consumers. Messages are stored on the broker in what's called a topic. Topics can be divided into partitions and the message goes into a partition. This allows scalability as we can tell Kafka to store copies of that message on separate brokers in different partitions. When message 2 comes in, it's replicated and distributed across multiple brokers in partitions. Same for message 3. If a broker dies, messages are not lost. The consumer who is interested in messages 1, 2 and 3 can subscribe to the topic. It'll start receiving messages 1, 2 and 3 in order with an index number where it read up to. If the consumer fails or crashes, it can use the index number to retry and continue where it left off. Docker Compose is a simple way to describe how we want to run containers. Rather than running every single container with separate docker run commands, we can describe our entire intent as a file. And I like this idea because I don't have to document how to run every single container. Instead, the Docker Compose file becomes a living document. So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a messaging and a Kafka folder. And inside of this Kafka folder, I have a readme, which is my introduction to Kafka, how to build and run Kafka inside of a Docker container, how to start up Zookeeper, as well as run three Kafka instances, connect them, and also running a simple producer and consumer. If you're new to Kafka, be sure to check out my link down below to my introduction to Kafka, where we take a look at this stuff in more detail. But if we scroll down in my readme file, we'll get to the section Docker Compose with Kafka, where we'll build up a Docker Compose file to run all of our components with a simple docker up command. So be sure to check out the link down below to the source code so you can follow along. So we started our journey on the Apache Kafka website, where we went over to the download Kafka button, we can find the version of Kafka in a compressed TGZ file, which we can download, but instead of downloading it, I'm going to use a Docker file. So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have messaging Kafka, and in the Kafka folder, I have a Docker file, and we start off with a simple OpenJDK buster image, because Kafka needs Java in order to run, then we simply install curl, we specify the Kafka version we need using an environment variable, and we use this environment variable to construct a URL to that zip TGZ file from the download link. We then proceed to download that with curl, and then we extract it using tar, and then start up Kafka with a start Kafka sh script that I created on the left hand side here. If we take a look at that script, that script executes a Kafka service start script, which is bundled within the Kafka installation. And that script 
script simply points to the location of a Kafka configuration, which we're going to mount into every container we run. So that's the Kafka Docker file. To start up Zookeeper in the messaging Kafka folder, I created a Zookeeper folder with a separate Docker file. Now in this demo, Zookeeper comes baked in with the Kafka installation. So the Docker file is going to be very similar. It's also going to start with OpenJDK. It's also going to have an environment variable for the Kafka version. It's going to go ahead and install curl and construct the same URL and download the same version of Kafka. It's going to go ahead and use tar to extract it, but this time it's going to run the start zookeeper script as a command for the container when it starts up. If we take a look at the left hand side, we have our start zookeeper and the Kafka installation comes bundled with the zookeeper service start script. So we're going to go ahead and execute that script and point it to a Kafka zookeeper configuration file, which we're going to mount into the zookeeper container as well. So those are our Docker files for our Zookeeper and our Kafka instances. Next up, we'll need a configuration file, a configuration file for Zookeeper 1, for Kafka 1, 2, and 3. And you can start up as many Kafka instances as you like using the same type of process. So let's take a look at the configuration files. Under my GitHub repo, under messaging Kafka, I have a config folder. And inside of this config folder, I have a folder for each one of our instances, a folder for Kafka 1 with a configuration file for that, Kafka 2, a configuration file for that as well as Kafka 3 and a config file for that one and then I also have Zookeeper 1. In this demo we're just going to be running one Zookeeper instance. Let's take a look at the Kafka configuration file. So the first thing in this file we have a broker ID and this is a unique ID of each of the brokers. For Kafka 1 I'm setting this broker ID to 1. If we take a look at Kafka 2 I have the broker ID set to 2. Kafka 3 has the broker ID set to 3. This makes it easy to identify the replica we're looking at when looking at the Kafka files. Next up, we have deeper configuration like the number of network threads, number of IO threads. We have socket send buffer, so message buffer sizes we can tune. But more importantly, we have the log basics. So where the logs are stored, where are our messages stored that come into this Kafka instance? Kafka by default stores its messages on temp Kafka logs. Now it's important to understand if we run this Kafka instance, it'll persist as data into this folder which is inside of the container if the container dies we'll lose the messages so it's important that we create a docker volume and mount folder from outside into the container so that when the container stops and restarts it will persist its data so we'll take a look at how to mount a folder into the container in this location to persist data the next line is the minimum number of partitions and for this demo i'm going to leave it at one and then we also have a setting regarding retention hours this is how long we want to keep Keep messages on disk for and then finally we have zookeeper connection details so Kafka needs to connect to zookeeper and zookeeper houses all the configuration management and has details about every Kafka topic as well as every Kafka partition so we have the connect address set to zookeeper 1 and the port now in my introduction to Kafka as well as this video we'll be producing a message which will go to Kafka and it'll be stored in one of the partitions on one of the brokers in a future video we'll be taking a look at high available availability and replication. So we'll take a look at how to replicate messages across different partitions on different brokers to ensure our message is replicated in case one of the broker dies. So that's the basic configuration files we have for Kafka 1, 2 and 3 as well as Zookeeper. So now that we have our Docker files and we have our config files, let's take a look at how we can set up a Docker Compose file to run all of these containers with ease. So if we take a look at my readme, we're going to start with an empty docker compose.yaml file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my messaging Kafka folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new file called docker compose.yaml. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this block into that file, which is going to be an empty compose file version 3.8. And here we can identify our services we want to run. So the first block is going to be how to run our Zookeeper instance. I'm going to go ahead and copy paste the snippet into our Compose file. And this defines how to run Zookeeper 1. So I have a service called Zookeeper 1 and I'm going to specify a container name. And this is important in Docker Compose because every container name will give it a DNS record so other containers can make a network call over the container name as a DNS. So I have container name Zookeeper 1 and you notice this address in each of our 
our Kafka configurations. Then I'm going to specify the image and you can call the image anything you like. And more importantly, we need to specify a build context. This is to tell Docker where to find the Docker file. Since we have our Docker file under Zookeeper, we need to tell Docker Compose to find the Docker file under the Zookeeper folder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define a volume to mount the Zookeeper configuration. And this is the location of our Zookeeper config, which is in config Zookeeper 1 and zookeeper.properties. So we're going to specify that path over here and we're going to mount it into the expected path where Zookeeper is expecting the configuration. So that's the Zookeeper instance. Now, if we go back to our readme, I'm going to copy paste the second block, which is how to run Kafka 1. And then I'm going to create a new line. I'm going to paste the Kafka 1. I'm just going to indent it so that it's under services. And we can see I have another service now called Kafka 1. Its container name is Kafka 1. That'll be its DNS entry. I then have an image, I'm just going to call it Kafka, and then a build context, which is just dot. That is because the Docker file is in the same location as my Docker Compose file, as you can see on the left here. Then we're going to specify two volumes. One volume is for the configuration. So this is the configuration locally that I've defined in the Kafka folder under config, under Kafka-1, the service.properties file. I'm going to mount this file into the container, into its expected path. And then secondly, we've taken a look at the Kafka config configuration where it stores its data and it stores its data under temp Kafka logs folder. So we're going to create a data folder on our host where we're going to mount in a folder for Kafka one and mount it into that location. This will allow the container to write its data into temp Kafka, which is a Docker volume, and that's going to be persistent on our host machine. So if the Kafka container dies and comes back, the data will still be there. So that is the Kafka one instance. Now to create a Kafka two instance, all I'm going to do is copy paste this block and I'm going to rename the server to Kafka 2. The container name is going to be Kafka 2 and the configuration path is going to be changed. That's so going to be mounting in the Kafka 2 server.properties file. And then the data volume is also going to be a new folder on our host called slash data Kafka 2. And then I'm going to grab this Kafka 2 block and I'm going to create a new block called Kafka 3. And I'm going to rename Kafka 2 to Kafka 3, the container name as well, as well as the config location. So we ensure that we're pointing our configuration to each respective configuration file that we have on disk. So now we've defined four services, one for Zookeeper 1, Kafka 1, 2, and 3. Next up, we're going to define two extra services for a producer and a consumer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run Kafka images with bash terminals where we can go and SSH in and we can use the producer to create a message and the consumer to receive a message. So if we take a look at my readme, I have the producer over here. I'm just going to copy paste this block and at the bottom of my Docker compose file, I'm just going to go ahead and paste that. And then I'm just going to proceed to fix up the indentation. And what we have here is the Kafka producer. And here I'm just going to call the container name Kafka producer. I'm going to run the Kafka image. And that's because this image provides a producer script that we can use to produce messages. The build context is just going to be dot because we're going to use the same Docker file as Kafka. And here is the magic. What we're going to do is set the working directory to slash Kafka, because that's the location where our script is that we want to execute as the producer. We're going to set an entry point to bash. We're going to keep standard in open, and we're going to keep TTY to true. So this will keep the container in a paused state so that we can SSH to it. If we take a look at my readme, I also have a consumer with exactly the same template. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And on the new line, I'm going to paste our consumer. I'm I'm going to go ahead and fix up the indentation and now we have a producer as well as a consumer in our docker compose file so now you can see how to describe multiple containers and how to run them in a simple docker compose file and this can make it really easy to set up and run local test environments especially when you have to run multiple kafka containers so let's take a look how easy it is to build and run these containers so now that we have our compose file to build all these containers what i need to do is change directory to my messaging kafka folder because that is where our docker compose file is and then i can say docker compose build and this will go ahead and build all the containers inside of this docker file and you can see that is now successful and to run these containers i can simply say docker compose up 
and then we can see it starting up all of our containers. We can see all the logs are being produced to the terminal. And we can also see if we take a look at our messaging Kafka folder, there's a new folder called data. And inside there are each of our volume mounts. You can see in our Docker Compose file, if we take a look at Kafka 1, we have a volume called slash data slash Kafka 1. Kafka 2 also has data Kafka 2 and Kafka 3 has data Kafka 3. And that represents the folder structure on the left hand side here. These are volumes where we can see Kafka storing all the data of our messages and persisting it on the host. So the next thing we're going to do is go into our consumer and create a topic. So what I'm going to do is open up a new terminal. and I'm going to say Docker PS and we can see all of our containers running. We have Kafka 1, 2 and 3. We have Zookeeper as well as our consumer and producer. So I'm going to take the name of the consumer and I'm going to say Docker exec minus IT and I'm going to pass in the container name followed by bash. This is going to give me a terminal into the consumer container where I can create a topic and start up the consumer which will subscribe to that topic. So if we take a look at my readme, I have a section on topics and how to create topics. And you can see here, we can exec into any one of the containers that's part of the network and we can create a topic with the following script. We call the built-in Kafka topic script. We say we want to create a topic we point to Zookeeper where to create that topic. We pass in a replication factor and for demo purposes, I'm not going to replicate this message. So the replication factor is one. I'm then going to specify I want three partition for this topic. So this is going to put a partition on each one of my replicas and my topic name is going to be orders for an online ordering system. So I'm going to copy paste this, paste it to the terminal and that will create our topic orders from the consumer container. Then to view that topic, I can run the describe flag so I can say Kafka topics sh describe topic orders and we can view that topic. You can see that we have three partition. Each partition is on a different replica. So the producer and the consumer both have scripts in order to start up a consumer or a producer. To start up the consumer, I'm going to run Kafka console consumer.sh. I'm going to point it to each one of my Kafka instances and I'm going to say I'm interested in the topic orders from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that and that will pause. That means now it's connected to the Kafka instances and it's waiting for a message. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split the terminal into two and on the right hand terminal I'm going to say docker ps and I'm just going to grab the name of the producer. I'm then going to say docker exec minus it pass in the producer name which is the container name of the producer followed by bash. So now I'm in the producer container and I want to produce a message. So then I'm going to proceed to produce a message by running the Kafka console producer producer script which takes in a list of Kafka instances and the topic to produce a message to. So we're going to produce a message to the orders topic and we're going to produce a message just using echo and passing it to that script. So you can put any type of text field here, JSON format, XML, whatever you like that describes what your message looks like. So what I'm going to do is copy paste this to the terminal and we produce a message. You can see on the left hand side that our consumer has automatically picked up that message. I can then press up and I can change and I can pass in another order. Let's say I want to pass an order ID 2 that will produce another message on the left with order 2. The same thing can be done and I can increase the ID another time. So I send a third message called order 3 So we can see we've received order 1, 2 and 3 in sequence on the consumer. I can then proceed to stop that consumer by pressing control C and I I can press up to run it again and notice when I say from the beginning it's going to proceed to read the messages from the beginning. So we'll see here order three, two and one and it reads the messages in no particular order. So this is the basics of using Docker Compose to start up a Kafka cluster and running a producer as well as a consumer. So you can see how easy it is to set up a local Kafka test environment for trying out all the Kafka features with a Docker Compose file. In the next video we'll take a look at how to write code to build up our own Kafka consumer and this would help you build real world applications on top of Kafka. In future videos we'll be taking a look at how to build a producer as well as setting up high availability for Kafka like setting up replication and ensuring that your messages are replicated across multiple brokers. We'll also take a look at how to run a Kafka cluster on top of Kubernetes. If you liked the video be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to support the channel even further be sure to check down below for the Patreon link or become a YouTube member. Also be sure to check out the community page in the link down below. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.